Welcome back to this week's episode of the podcast. I'm going to bring you something different this week. I'm super excited to welcome people into a little bit more about my world. And so I'm going to download a TikTok live that I did recently that I felt had a lot of value in modern dating, how people show up when they're texting and on social media and through dating apps, which is a way that people meet and connect and communicate these days. So I went live on Tuesday of this week on TikTok and we had a lot of engagement, a lot of interaction and a lot of great questions that I wanted to bring to you on this week's episode of the podcast. I also understand that inviting you to look into the rest of my life is actually a huge benefit for the community to learn a little bit more about what's going on in my world. And doing TikTok lives is a lot of fun for me and it provides a lot of value and great content to bring to you here on the podcast. So I'm repurposing a recent video that I did live on TikTok. I hope you truly enjoy this episode and get a lot of value out of it. If you do, please share it with one person as sharing episodes of the podcast on social media helps spread the message and education of how to navigate modern dating for busy adults like you and I. Without further delay, let's get into today's episode, a recent live I did on TikTok. If you're not following me there, please do so. Search my name, Dave Glazer, or on Instagram at DaveGlazer underscore CSCS. Engage with the community and let me know if you have any follow-up questions from today's conversation. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Uh, welcome back. It is Tuesday. It is Avalanche game night. I am so pumped uh, to have the round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs begin tonight. So, uh, But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about dating red flags as they show up when you get back out there dating. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Dave in Denver. As you join me, put your first name and where you're from in the comment section below. And we'll get this conversation started around dating red flags, how you show up, how other people show up uh, in modern dating with text messages and social media and dating apps as a way that people connect and communicate when it comes to dating. So I'm Dave in Denver. Go ahead, throw your first name and where you're from in the comments section below, and we'll get this conversation started. And then I am here to answer your questions about dating red flags. What shows up for you as you get out there um, in dating in the modern era, you know, mostly with texting as communication, um, ghosting is a huge red flag. Hey, Kels, thanks for joining us. So I did end the codependent disaster I was in. Congratulations, Kels, that's awesome. What have you seen show up for you since you ended that uh, codependent relationship? You you call it a disaster, and I don't doubt that it was incredibly challenging. Um, to end something that had some codependency as a part of it. So tell me what your experience has been like since. And if you guys don't know me, I'm Dave in Denver. Click that follow button so that you know when I go live next. Um, and I'd be open and here available to answer your questions. Last words to me were, um, why are you in it, LOL? My last words, uh, it sounds as if those uh that question really hit home for you so tell me more tell me more about your experience oh long distance and he was stalking you yeah i can understand how uh stalking stalking could be a uh, a really confronting and uh complicated experience so sorry you had to go through that but uh glad to hear you're uh moving on <laughs> b miller thanks yeah denver's a great place uh, what brought you to Colorado? Welcome. Hey, Kristen, can we talk about meeting people organically? I have to get off dating apps. Yes, absolutely, Kristen. This is something I've been wanting to talk about for a really long time here on uh, my TikTok lives. So um, I recently broke up with my dating apps maybe like six weeks ago. Uh, they were just were not serving me whatsoever. Um, what I found as I was out there dating and intentionally dating on the dating apps is that was one of those things that was causing me anxiety and a lot of question marks around other people's behavior, my own behavior as I was showing up on the dating app. So I went cold turkey, I deleted my dating app profile and I have never been happier as far as it goes with dating. Um, I took some time off to just kind of reset and refresh because I saw some of my own red flags showing up 
And while I'm open to a relationship, I'm not necessarily seeking one out. And this is the joy and this is the benefit of not having dating apps because I can definitely become distracted by a dating apps. Thank you for that feedback and that reflection, Candace. I appreciate it. Yeah, they disrupted my piece as well. That's a really good way to say it. So um, if you guys don't know me, I'm Dave in Denver. I'm a personal trainer who's passionate about connecting mind and body so that we can live the lives that we want. So go ahead, click that follow button so you know when I go live next. We were talking about meeting people organically. So um, in the past six weeks since I deleted my dating apps, I've had a few friends reach out and say, hey, I would love, hey, Teresa, thanks for coming back. I would love to connect you with a friend of mine. You know, they're new to town or we feel like you guys would have a lot in common. So let me, are you open to being connected? And a couple of times I've said yes to being connected to a friend of a friend. That's one way organically to meet. However, what happens when like people can't read your mind, right? Like they don't know that you're actively looking or open to a relationship. So what would it, what would it feel like for you guys to go to your friend group and say, hey, I'm open to a relationship. I'm actively looking for one. I don't want to do the apps. Do you know anybody in your friend group or coworkers or whatever, church group, whatever, um, that would be a good fit for me? Because who knows you better than your friends, right? And yes, they may have uh, like a subjective opinion about who would be a right fit for you, but they know you best, right? And they want what's best for you. They're going to have your best in intentions um, in mind. They might not always get it right, um, and yet they will still give it their effort. So that's one way to meet people organically. Um, it's becoming very beautiful here in Colorado. So getting outside, like going to a local park, Cheeseman Park, Congress Park, Wash Park to play volleyball. I've been recently inv invited to play volleyball. I declined because I don't need any more physical activity in my life on top of jujitsu and working out. But um, recently I was at my neighborhood pool my community pool for where I live and chat uh, began an organic conversation with the girl sitting on the um, lawn chair next to me, exchange numbers. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Who knows? That's one other way to meet people organically in the modern era, you know, with texting and dating apps and social media as a way that people stay connected and get uh, uh, communicate with each other. So, uh, those are some ways to meet people organically on your own. Another way is to go to places you enjoy going, like get out in public. What hobbies and passions do you have that would put you in front of other people that are like-minded, that might share the same values that you have? And that's a great way to meet people organically. Yeah, absolutely, Kristen. Thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Do, 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 do. I think I missed some comments here. I realized I'm emotionally unavailable at this time. Yeah, Kels, I, I realized the same exact thing. And uh, so I decided to take some time off. So thank you, for, uh, thank you for that reflection. It's becoming an arduous task to use a dating app. Yeah, I have no doubt about that, Teresa. Thank you. The guy who wanted to clean my house wearing a diaper was it for me. Hmm. It seems a bit off topic. And I'm going to set a boundary around that. If it's meant to be a joke, there's plenty of forums here on TikTok to go make that joke. That's not what we're talking about here. Uh, not sure what context you had there. Um, but if you, want, if you want to clarify that, and it does apply to our conversation, don't hesitate. And if you have a specific question about that, please don't hesitate as well. So thank you, April, for the hearts and for the rose. Appreciate that. Teresa, thanks for the likes. I pretty much have you to thank for all of it. So thanks. Yeah, you're welcome, Kels. Appreciate it. What follow-up questions, Kels, do you have um, after that uh, codependent relationship disaster that you chose to end? Tell me more about your experience there. And hit me, guys, hit me up with uh, your dating questions as we – I'm new to my area, so I'll be walking my new pup more in different parks. Great plan, Teresa, 100%. Get out there. Glad you ditched them. Yeah, we're getting some support about ditching the dating apps. That's pretty cool. Oh, this is a good question, Mark. I appreciate that. Uh, what would you do if someone opens up, up about their prior relationship abuse on the first date? That's a very good question. And if I'm reading your question correctly, it sounds as if they're opening up 
to share their experience with you. So this is a really fine line to do on a first date. Um, it could lead to too much information too soon. And it, that's been known to um, actually disconnect as opposed to bring people closer together. So I, I can understand where this question is coming from. What comes up for me is that first dates are meant to be like an exploration. They're meant to be fun. They're meant to be enjoyable. Uh, they're not meant to be like an interview or like a dumping of our entire history because we cannot know somebody in their and their entire history after one date. So having clear boundaries around what you want to talk about, and this is great coming from um, Mark. I'm assuming you're a masculine core energy person, but we'll get into this here in a second. So having boundaries about what you want to talk about on first date is really attractive and it's really healthy. Uh, it's also um, very grounding to our central nervous system. So it sounds as if like there was an overshare on a first date. So this is an opportunity to set a boundary with somebody that you don't know very well. Hey, it sounds like you went through something really difficult. I might not be the right person to talk to about that. I'm interested in getting to know about your relationship history further in the future. Right now, I don't feel as if this is the right time to have that conversation. And that's one way to set a boundary around an overshare or receiving too much information on a first date. Trust me, I've been there. I've been the overshare. I have been overshared on. And uh, in general, it's uncomfortable for a first date for both people. Uh, Kels, yeah, you were clear in the beginning that you require space. And it sounds as if he was pushing and stalking just a little bit. So invading your personal space. Been dating a guy for eight weeks now and having kids has come up. How soon is too soon? Jess, I really uh, value this question. I, I do appreciate where it's coming from. And only you can determine how soon is too soon. And I feel as if uh, family plans is a very uh, appropriate conversation contextually. Like second date, third date, what we don't want to do is in the dating world is waste anybody's time, right? We want to show up as authentically and as honest as we possibly can be. And if kids are a life plan for you or the other person, I would really want to discuss that second date, third date, and a couple of ways that we can bring up that topic of conversation in a non-confrontational kind of way is, hey, what does dating look like for you right now? From there, you can take it to the next step. Hey, what do family plans look like for you in the future? I feel as if getting curious and asking a genuine, cur genuinely curious question about what somebody else's plans are for the future um, is very important early on, within the first three dates. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot change your mind later on down the road of like, hey, I, I know that I said this on our third date. I've been sitting with that. And what's come up for me in the last six months, getting to know you better is that I want X instead of Y. Totally valid. And if your change of mind or change of decision for your life plan, your value, your family plans actually ends the relationship, well, then that's a great thing so that neither one of you are no, long, no longer wasting your time with the wrong partner who does not want the same value-based decisions that you do. So I don't feel as if eight weeks is too soon. Actually, it might be a little too late. Uh, and what, why I say that is because we don't want to tiptoe around issues that are important to us, whatever those issues may be, right? So hit me up with a follow-up question if you have one based on what I shared. He was depending on me too much, jealous of even celebs. I don't understand what you're trying to say there, Kels. How did jealousy of celebrities show up in your relationship? Teresa, I find negative. I find... I navigate poorly about just how much to share on a first date. Yeah, that's understandable, Teresa. I, I feel as if you're not alone there. I certainly don't know what I would want to share on a first date until I'm actually there, right? Like, what was our conversation like before the first date? Was it just logistical planning for the first date? Because that's generally what I recommend. Or was there oversharing occurring before the first date? Like, hey, um... I'm looking forward to our first date on Friday. By the way, I just got out of a relationship. I don't know what I want right now um, and so forth, right? So that might be a red flag showing up of like, are you already oversharing? We haven't even gone on our first date yet. So I'm going to pump the brakes and get curious about where this is coming from. 
are you experiencing some anxiety show up for you around our first date? Being that you just shared with me that you've been recently out of a relationship. So uh, let me know, Teresa, if you're looking for more support on that topic. Uh, I'd love to invite you to our uh, small group coaching program free for a week. So let me know if you want some more details. Um, I believe in love at first sight because we fell in love that fast. I believe God brings people together. Okay, April, that that definitely sounds as if it's um, part of your relationship programming. And for you, it sounds like your truth. Thanks for sharing. Mark, okay, I said something quite similar. And then he shared again about a near-death experience. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a lot of oversharing on a first date. What came up for you after the first date? Did you go out again? That's what I want to know. Uh, Kels, at 40, he decides, let's call my dad and random people for answers. Whew. Sounds like a lot of boundary crossing right there. So what's next for you, Kels? <laughs> hey, Steve. Welcome back. Happy Tuesday to you, too. I was crystal clear and have screenshots to prove. Okay. Uh, Kels, what is it about continuing to prove what your experience was like in the relationship? Oh, being threatened by a best friend. That's really tough. I, I can understand how hard that would be. All right, Teresa, I'll talk to you soon. Yep, shoot me a message if you're interested. Appreciate the likes. I've got about five more minutes here, everybody. Hit me with those dating red flag questions as you join us. Yeah, you bet, Jess. We're on the same page with kids. He brought it up and is looking for marriage and family. Awesome. What is it about the topic that inspired the question here on the, on the TikTok Live? Because it sounds as if you guys are on the same page. I wanted proof to my dad and random friend. Okay. Now that you've proved it to your friend and your dad, what is next for you, Kels? All right, Mark. Yes, we went on a few dates after as well. I was intentionally dating with intention to be more open. You're not dating anymore. Okay. So, Mark, I have a follow-up question for you. Did that pattern of behavior continue on future dates? Jess says, I'm recently divorced but can see myself with him. Okay. You said eight weeks, right, Jess? It sounds as if you have a good connection. Awesome, Kels. Yeah. Self-love, critical in, uh, in the process of grieving a relationship that you've lost. Yeah, I support that. Figure yourself out again. What does that look like for you, Kels? What does figuring yourself out look like? I don't want to rush it and ruin things, I guess. I'm ready for kids and so is he. Yeah, eight weeks. Okay. So, Jess... If you could clarify for me, what does your family plan look like? If you could lay it out, ideally, what is your timeline? Uh, Steve, so thoughts on friends setting you up with their friends for dates. Yeah, Steve, 100%, I'm behind it. I'm 100% behind friends of friends being um, potential partners and to be set up too. And once that setup happens, I want the autonomy to connect, reach out, and have that conversation without that friend being involved any longer. No, but I did see he had a lot of abandonment issues and wanted to move really fast. Mark, that sounds really challenging, but it also sounds as if you're self-aware of where you're at and how you felt in somebody else's presence. So keep rocking it, man. Just some red flags are just sharing their complete story prior to the dates. Yeah, I can understand where you're coming from there, Steve, that um, sharing too much before a first date or before you've even gone out is an attraction killer. Like, honestly, there's no mystery there anymore. Okay, Jess, yeah, that makes sense. If you're going to be 34 this summer and you want that, you want your first kid by 40, sounds like a reasonable timeline to me. Keep me up to date, though, because I want to hear more about how this uh, connection builds in the future. We're here to support you guys as you go through modern dating with text messages and social media and dating apps is the way that people meet nowadays. So if you want more information on uh, group coaching or one-on-one coaching, don't hesitate to shoot me a message on Instagram. 
click that follow button here on TikTok so that you know when I go live next. And uh, I'm happy to answer any of your dating questions as a follow-up to this conversation tonight. Thank you so very much for tuning into today's episode. I know that I talk very, very fast on this live episode or this live TikTok version of the podcast. And if you have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to ask me on Instagram at Dave Glazer underscore CSCS regarding your life, career, fitness, nutrition, or how to pursue your purpose while juggling everything else that you have going on in your life. If you have questions about our small group coaching, please don't hesitate to reach out now. Until next week, this is Dave Glazer in Denver, Colorado, wishing you health and happiness wherever you're at in the world.